Hey guys, TBL here with more Call of Duty Black Ops 2 coverage for the PS3. Alright, we've made our way to the main menu here, which looks pretty cool. David Mason, so yeah. Uh, as I'm sure some of you know, you play as, uh, I guess the main character of this is the son of uh, Mason from Black Ops 1. I said the brightness, I always put that as really bright. No, I'm not afraid of the dark, it's just how I work. Uh, hearing impaired, I am not hearing impaired, so I'm going to leave that on off. Treyarch mix. Well, let's take a listen. Sounds like we're about to start in some dubstep. I guess that adjusts the uh, the, the audio levels, like presets. Yeah. yeah so we set up our horizontal and vertical clipping view. And a little more, a little more, a little more. Perfect. Well, almost perfect. Uh, graphic content. I'm just going to leave that on, on. And here's the main menu. You can choose campaign, zombies, or multiplayer. We're going to jump straight into multiplayer right now, so we can take a look at all the weapons, perks, attachments, and other assorted goodies in, in Black Ops 2. Alright, here we are at the multiplayer menu for Call of Duty Black Ops 2. I'm going to head to options real quick, so I'm going to show you something. Now, contrary to the previous Call of Duty games, at least the console one, this one, this Black Ops 2 actually displays at a, at, at a full 1080 resolution, which caught me by surprise when the game didn't switch to 1280 by, or, yeah, 1280 by 720 when you, uh, when you started off. And I think this is the first console Call of Duty game to do that, to actually display it a full 1920 by 1080 I or P, whichever you're running on. And that being said, you can actually install the textures to your uh, system's hard drive, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, I guess that, that allows it to stream better and maybe load a little bit faster. It doesn't have to preload the textures every time you play the game. And, but as you can see, if you're going to go with this route, which I would recommend, I did notice that it made things a little bit faster. Um, it, it, but it does take up a lot of space, nearly two gigs of space, so you got to be prepared for that if you're going to go with this route, but I would definitely recommend it. And this is going to take a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit until it's done installing the textures. Oh, a friend of mine is now offline. I'm sure he'll be back. Alright, now that we're done with all that, as you can see the install finished. Let's head back and take a look at uh, what we've got inside Call of Duty Black Ops 2. Take a look at all the, the weapons and perks and attachments that we can go through. So let's start with Custom Class 1, Weapons the MTAR. And as you can see, just like most other Call of Duty games, you get three basic perks, a uh, lethal and a tactical grenade, and then something new in this game called Wild Cards, which I'll explain to you a little bit later. They're basically like adding extra attachments, perks, and... Uh, and uh, weapons like extra grenades and such to uh, your loadout and you see at the very top 8 out of 10 that's the points you use to allocate to uh, to to attachments and perks and whatnot so we got the MTAR, the Type 25 which is like a modified fully automatic Type 95 from Modern Warfare 3 the SPOT 556 it's like the M16 the FAL OSW which is like all the other FALs a single shot long range the M27 fully automatic the SCAR H, which is a classic of the uh, Call of Duty franchise. The SMR, which is a semi-automatic assault rifle. Insane damage output, apparently. The M8A1, which is kind of like an M4, except it's a burst it's a burst fire, so a four-round burst. And then the good old-fashioned AK-47, except it's called the AN-94, which is a little different. I'm going to go ahead and go with that. Let's take a look at the perks. We've got Lightweight. Hardline, lightweight makes you run faster. Hardline, you earn your score streak, your score streaks faster. Blind eye makes you undetectable by support units. Flag jacket, so you can take less explosive damage. And ghost, which is different than how it is in Black Ops One. You still, you're you're invisible from radar, but only as long as you're moving or performing an action, which is great. So if you're standing still, you show up on radar. And for your second tier perks, we've got toughness and uh, cold blooded. Which is different than how it is in uh, Modern Warfare 3. I'll just take, let you let you read through that. Fast hands, which is like the uh, the 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 
pro version of Sleight of Hand from Modern Warfare 3, you switch weapons faster. Hardwired, which makes you immune to counter UAVs and EMPs, sort of like uh, Assassin Pro from Modern Warfare 3, and then Scavenger, which lets you pick up packs from downed enemies. Now perk 3, we've got Dexterity, Extreme Conditioning, uh, another cool one, which is uh, introduced to this game, Engineer, shows enemy equipment and allows you to uh, booby trap enemy care packages, which is awesome. Awareness. Dead silence. Awareness is cool. It's good for people who have headsets. It makes uh makes enemies lets you hear enemies easier, I guess. Dead silence makes you you know completely quiet. And tactical mass makes uh, it reduces the effect of stun grenades and flash grenades. Now as for the lethals, we've got grenades, simtexes, a combat axe, which is replacing the uh, tomahawk, bouncing betties, which are from Modern Warfare 3. The good old fashioned C4s and Claymores. Uh, for tacticals, there's a few new ones. We've got basic cushion grenade, concussion grenade and smoke grenades. A new thing called the sensor grenade, which detects enemy soldiers, so it's like a mini UAV. The uh, black hat, which is what you use to hack care packages or disable enemy vehicles. It's really cool. A new grenade called the shock charge which is a proximity mine that shocks enemies, kind of like a stun, like a, like a taser. An EMP grenade, which is from Modern Warfare 3, flashbangs. The trophy system, which is from Modern Warfare 3, but they, they modified it a little bit. Uh, missiles that are called in on you have a chance to penetrate. Something that was really annoying in Modern Warfare 3 was uh, somebody calls in a Predator missile and you got a trophy system, it just blows it right up. Well now. Predator missiles, or whatever they're called in this game, have a chance to go through. And then you've got your basic, your basic tactical insertion, which everybody knows what that does. You get to choose your spawn point. Now let's take a look at the wild cards. As I, like I said before, you can use these to allocate more, or you can use you can allocate more points as you can see up at the top from seven out of ten. You can use these to add more perks or more attachments to your weapons, or to carry a second primary. Perk 1 Greed gives you another first tier perk, Perk 2 Greed gives you another second tier perk, and so on. Overkill lets you take another primary weapon. Uh, primary Gunfighter allows you to equip another attachment to your primary, and Secondary Gunfighter does the same thing, except when you're using Overkill. Equip a secondary attachment to your, uh, to your, uh, to your secondary, your second primary. Let's go with Perk 1 and the primary attachment. Now let's move on to uh, take a look at the attachments. You got the quick draw handle, reflex sights, fast mags, which is like a, it's from Black Ops One, ACOG scope, a foregrip, an extended stock, which helps you move faster while you're aiming, sort of like a uh, stalker from Modern Warfare Three, full metal jackets, suppressors to reduce muzzle flash, an EOTech sight, which is basically a hollow sight. Select fire, which is cool. It allows you to switch your weapon between semi-automatic and fully automatic fire rates. A laser sight, which increases your hip fire accuracy. It's kind of like steady aim. A target finder, which is like a hollow sight, but it you can tag enemies and then it'll notify you when it, that enemy is in your crosshairs. A hybrid optic, which is basically the hybrid sight from Modern Warfare 3. It's an ACOG mixed with a reflex red dot sight. You got an extended clip for your uh, your mags, and a grenade launcher, and the MMS, which is really cool, the millimeter scanner. It it detects lingering heat signatures from uh, from enemies through materials, so it allows you to see through walls. That's freaking sick. Now the launchers, you got the small, the basically the stinger of this game, the FHJ, and the RPG. Can't go wrong with the classic. For your specials, you've got a crossbow which fires explosive bolts, and the brand new ballistic knife. Look at the damage on that thing. That is ridiculous. Moving on to the handguns, you've got the 5.7 from uh, Modern Warfare 3, a TAC-45, a B-23R, the Executioner, which serves as this, as, uh, this game's magnum of sorts, except it fires shotgun, sh uh, shotgun shells, which is insane. And then the Cap 40, which is fully automatic. It's kind of like a G18.
Now another cool thing is uh, the attachments you can put on pistols. They have their own branch now. You can put on a reflex sight, extended clips, laser sights. We've gone through most of these before. But uh, dual wielding is, I think, exclusive to pistols in this game. Oh, and see, this is what will happen if uh, if you put too many too many attachments on and you don't have enough uh, wild card points to uh, to apply them to. See up at the top, I'm at 10 out of 10, so I can't put anything else on my loadout. For each loadout, you get 10 points, and you allocate those points using weapons, perks, attachments, all the good stuff. Now time for the score streaks. Yeah, the good stuff. I'll explain how score streaks work in this game after we go through this. But first, you've got the basic UAV. Allows you to see enemies on your uh, on your radar, enemies who aren't hidden. The RCXD, which is a classic from uh, Black Ops 1. The Hunter Killer, which seeks out enemy targets or vehicles and just kind of blazes through them. The care package, which something really cool about care packages in, in this game is that if you get okay, if you call in a care package and it's something you don't want, you can actually send it back up and roll for something else. I thought that was pretty cool. I'm tired of getting resupplies. Next, you've got the counter UAV. The Guardian, which is a placeable dish that projects a cone of microwave radiation and stuns or impairs enemies. It's kind of like the shock grenade thing. The classic looking dragon fire, which you control from the skies and just tear up enemies. It's like the recon drone from Modern Warfare 3, except you can shoot. The war machine, which is a sentry gun that fires grenades. Awesome. The death machine, which is another one from our Black Ops 1. It's a Gatling gun that you get to call in and walk around. The classic sentry gun, except a little more high tech. Oh, what's also cool about the sentry gun is you can remote control them now. The lightning strike, which is basically like a mortar strike or a precision airstrike. The Hellstorm missile is uh, basically this game's predator missile. Oh yeah, now these are cool. The AGRs, the big robots that you see all over the trailer. You actually get to call one in and then control it. Or let it go on its own. The stealth chopper, I'm predicting this is probably going to be the big damage dealer in this game. It's basically an attack helicopter that does not appear on enemy radar. The orbital VSAT is basically like uh, the advanced UAV from Modern Warfare 3. The Escort Drone serves a purpose pretty similar to the AH-6 from Modern Warfare 3. EMP systems is a basic EMP, shuts down enemy electronics. The Warthog does strafing runs over the battlefield, so it's kind of like strafe run from Modern Warfare 3. The Swarm calls in a bunch of those little hel the hunter killers from before to take out enemies. The K-9 unit is, you know, another classic Black Ops thing. The VTOL warship is basically this game's chopper gunner. And the Lodestar uh, is like the Reaper. You lace targets and then you blast them with missiles. So That's it for all the score streaks in this game. And actually I think that's pretty much covered uh, most of what we can go through with this. So let's take a couple of look, look at the options. All the uh, Actually, yeah, I, I should probably explain what score streaks are in this game. They work differently than other modern or Call of Duty games. You don't simply get kill streaks for taking out enemies. You get points for taking out enemies or performing team actions. Say if you're playing domination, if you take a domination point, you immediately get 200 points towards your score streak. And then if you take somebody else out, I think it's about 100 points towards your score streak. So you no longer have to specifically just keep killing enemies to get uh, a streak going. That, it, it, it's kind of like a, an improvement upon the the support kill streaks from Modern Warfare 3. It, it makes it easier for all kinds of players to build up points. You can build up points if you're doing nothing but playing the objective, which is really, I think, a, a, a positive move forward. It's kind of like Medal of Honor. Anyway, I think that's pretty much uh, everything we need to go through for basic multiplayer stuff. All right. We're probably going to have a couple of videos coming up showing off the actual score streaks in battle. So keep your eyes open for that. Once again, this is the Black Link from EOTW Podcast. Stay frosty, guys.